Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a basic chat application using Node.js and Socket.io. I'm also going to use Express, which is just a lightweight web, web framework that abstracts away some of the things that Node requires you to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a package.json file so that we can record some of the attributes of our project and also list what dependencies we'll need. So if this is just a regular JSON file and we can do stuff like name, which we'll just call chat, and then version, I'm just going to go ahead and put 0.0.1 .0 and then we can set private to true. This just prevents you from accidentally publishing your project publicly via npm and then dependencies and so our dependencies for this project are going to be socket io and express but i don't actually know what version socket io is on so i'm going to look that up really quickly and you can do that using npm info socket io version all right 0.9.16 you can also put in 0.9.x here. I'm just going to go ahead and put the current latest version for now. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for Express and look up the latest version of Express. npm info express version. Alright, 3.2.6. Okay, so now that we've got our package.json file, we can use npm to install our dependencies. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the directory that the project is in. For me, it's just a directory called chat. It can be whatever directory you want. And then put in npm install. So this will install socket.io and express. All right, now that we've got modules downloaded, we can make our actual app.js file. And this is gonna have the server in it and our server code. So first thing we can do is require our express module. And then to actually get our express functionality, we have to use it. And I'm gonna create a variable called app and just use the express function. Now, the thing that's different in Express version 3.0 and beyond is that whereas before you could use express.createServer to create an HTTP server, now in Express you no longer create an HTTP server automatically. So this app variable is actually just a function that bundles together basically everything in Express. And so the problem is for socket IO, we actually do need an HTTP server object. So we're going to have to manually create that. So I'm going to create a variable called server and then require my HTTP module and then create server. And then you can actually just pass it the app variable. And then we will need to create our socket functionality. So I'm going to create a variable called IO and then require socket IO. And then we need to make it listen. So this is why we need an HTTP server. The parameter of listen, I, socket IO listens to an HTTP server object. So we have to pass it to server. And now after doing that, the last thing we need to do is actually tell the server itself what to listen on. And so I'm just going to pick 3000, do whatever you want. And then so now that we've got our server set up, let's create a route because right now we can't actually access any pages. So this is where Express makes some things easier, just makes routing a bit easier. So we just use app.get and then I've set it the root directory. So that's the first parameter what the client is trying to access. And then just like without Express, we have a function with the HTTP request and the HTTP response as parameters. And then 
for this, all we need to do is do res.sendfile because we're going to create a file called index.html that we want the client to get whenever it goes to localhost 3000. So for this, we'll send directory name plus index.html. All right. So we've done all that. Let's check to make sure it works. Okay, cool. Our socket.io server has started. And let's, well, actually, first let's create our index.html page. Index.html. And we can go to, go to it to make sure it's working. Localhost 3000. Yep, we don't get an error, so we know we made it to our index.html page. But let's put some markup on here to make us more certain. So just basic stuff. I'm going to give it a title. Let's do chat with socket.io and node.js. And then body. Now I'm going to start adding some of the things we'll actually need for the chat. So I'm going to add a, a chat div for where we want the actual chat messages to go. And then I'm also going to add a form that the users can use to submit their chat messages. And then the first thing in here is going to be an input, something like size 35 or so. And then I'll give it an ID of a message. And then another input, which is just going to be a button. Okay. Now we've got that. Also, I'd like to give a height to this chat div because that way we'll actually be able to see it. And obviously, if you're doing this for real, you should put your CSS in another file and then link to it. But since all we're doing in this example tutorial is giving the chat div a height, I'm just going to put it in the HTML, in the index.html file. So height, 500 pixels. Okay, let's go look at that. Okay, we see that that appeared. This is the chat div and our form. So we've basically got our markup and CSS. So the next thing we need to do is add in some JavaScript. We're going to be using jQuery just because jQuery makes everything easier. So this is the URL for the latest version of jQuery. jQuery latest.mandal.js. You know you're kind of like obsessed when you have this memorized. And then the other um, file we need to include in here is actually a file that Socket.io generates for you when you use it. So that's going to be automatically on the local host. It'll be Socket.io slash Socket.io.js. And we can actually go look at that. So localhost 3000 and then this is the file we just put in there. All that just allows the client to actually connect to the server using sockets. Okay, and so we've got the, the files we need, and now we can start doing the fun part, which is actually writing the script so that the client can send messages to the server. So first thing we'll do is use the typical jQuery starting function. This is just shorthand for document.ready, so this function automatically runs when all the elements of the document have finished loading. And the first thing we want to do is get ourselves socket functionality. So we can do var socket equals io.connect, and that is just given to us from this JavaScript that we inserted into our index.html. And so the first thing we want to do is make sure that when a user submits a message through our form that it goes to the server. So let's create that functionality. Um, actually before that, let's get the variables we need. So we'll need the form, 
we'll just grab that with jQuery. I'll call this message form and then grab it with its ID of send message. Okay, and then I'll do the same with the message input. Grab that. And we'll also need the chat. The reason I'm doing this before is because some people, like for example, will use this part, use the jQuery function to get the ID chat over and over in their code. But since our variables aren't going to be changing, like obviously we'll be adding data to the chat box, but the chat um, element itself is not changing, we can just get that at the very beginning. And then that way the client doesn't have to go look for it each time you have this in your code. We can cache our variables basically and that just makes it a little faster. And so um, we want to bind an event handler to the message form. So every time the message form is submitted, we want to send our message to the server. So this is just normal jQuery. I'm attaching a submit handler to the message form, and then that takes a function with the event as the parameter. And the first thing I want to do is prevent the default behavior of the event. So e.preventDefault, because we don't want the form to actually submit and refresh the page. We just want the message to be sent to the server. So after I've done that, now I can send it to the server. And the way you do that is you do socket.emit. And so this will send an event to the server. And then to name the event, you can just name it whatever you want. Name it send message. That's the first parameter of this. And then the second parameter is the data we are actually sending. So you could do like a JSON-like object and do something like name Smitha. That's my name, by the way. And then message hello. But for now, just this example, all we're doing is sending a message. So I'm just going to do message box dot val. That's the jQuery function to just get the value of the message. And then after we've submitted that, submitted that to the server, we can clear the message box's value. So we can do that by passing val an empty string. Okay, so we've sent our message to the server now, supposedly. Whoops, I cleared that from my notepad. I'll rebuild that. Okay. Anyway, so, but the next thing we need to do is actually receive the event on the server side. So in order to do that, we have to put in our socket functionality on the server side too. So the way we do that is we have to start out by doing io.sockets.on. And so this is the first thing that happens basically whenever a client connects to a socket IO application. They turn on a connection event. And so this is the code for that on our server side. And then that takes a function of the socket, like the socket that the user itself is actually using, is sent. Okay, so this kind of reminds me of jQuery's like document ready function. Basically all your other code goes inside this function when it comes to jQuery and that's the same thing with the socket function here. All your socket code goes inside of this function. And so what we do is we look at the, the name for the event that we emitted here, and then we use that same name to receive on the server side. So on the server side, the way you receive messages is by using socket.on, and then we have to use the same name, send message as the first parameter, and then we, have, we can actually do something with our data by using a function. So function data. And then what do we want to do with the message we just received? Well, since this is a chat application, when a user sends a message, the message should go to all the other users. And the way you do that with socket is you use io.sockets.emit. And so this is just like emitting with one socket. You'll then create a name for the event that you're broadcasting to all your users. 
and this one could be new message and then we're gonna pass the data we got from the one that we got from our function parameter and that's all that sends it out to all the users there's a similar function actually called socket dot broadcast automate that you could use if you want to send it to every user besides the user that sent the data originally. So if I sent the message hello with io.socket.emit, it would be sent to everyone including me, but socket.broadcast.emit, it would send to everyone except me. We don't need that though. So that's it. And so we've done that on the server side and so the message has come back to us on the client side and now we have to receive the message on the client side and this is why I like nodes so much we use the exact same syntax and it'll just be socket.on and then we have to use the same name that we used before so there will be new message and then use a function to get our data and then what do we have to do all we have to do is actually display the message so that we can see it. And so we'll use our chat variable that we got and then just append to it using jQuery. So we'll append the data. Also, uh, a line, a new line, VR skip. And so that's it. Let's see how this works. No, not just as long as we did, didn't do anything wrong. All right, let's check it out. Refreshing. And I'm also going to open up another tab with the same window so you can see the messages appear. So I'll say hello. Oh, whoops. Let's see what happened there. Message box, message form. Oh, we I forgot the the number, the little symbols here that are eluding my mind as to their name, the hashtags, I guess, if you use Twitter too much. Anyway, yeah, forgot those, so let me refresh the page one more time. I hope you guys caught that earlier in this video. And then, okay, hello. Yay, it works. Okay, so you see that it appeared on this tab as well, and then if I send something here, hi, what's up? Nothing much. How about you? And then now you can have like every conversation you've ever had that you've hated before. I hate these NM how about you conversations. But anyway, yeah, that's all you need to do to create a chat application in Node.js. You can spend time talking to yourself on your local host now. I'm also thinking of making a video with a little bit of a more advanced chat with maybe usernames or private messaging and things like that. So let me know if you guys want me to do that in the comment section. And it looks like my color scheme has been changed. Anyway, yeah, let me know and I hope this video was useful.